Professor Sir Mark Walport is one of the most senior scientific statesmen in the UK today. As director of the Wellcome Trust, he oversees a major part of our national endeavor in medical research and is a powerful influence on the direction of future discoveries which will affect healthcare for all of us. Mark Walport was born and grew up in London. His father was a GP who was really a frustrated scientist. Mark has early memories of peering at the stars through a homemade telescope and watching radio-controlled boats on the local pond, but his interests inclined more to the biological than the physical sciences. Fascinated from a tender age by all forms of wildlife, his interest was fired at school by a charismatic biology teacher who took him beyond the limits of the school curriculum to learn how research worked through sophisticated studies of fruit flies. Like many youngsters, Mark attended and was inspired by the Royal Society Christmas Lectures, which he's never forgotten. And there was soon no doubt in his mind that a life in research was for him. At Cambridge, Mark chose to study medicine, knowing that this would enable him to root his scientific career firmly in the realities of medical practice and ensure its relevance to human health. It soon became clear that pathology would be his love, and he was fortunate to undertake a vacation project with one of the mentors who were to be so crucial in his future career. Mark cannot stress too strongly the advantages of effective mentorship of young, young scientists, and he has reason to be very grateful to a number of senior medical scientists who guided him on his path to success. At that time, Cambridge medical students mostly came to London for their clinical studies, and Mark enjoyed his clinical work at the Middlesex Hospital. He made sure to maintain contact with research, including undertaking an elective at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, where he first encountered one of the scientific problems that influenced the rest of his career. Like all successful scientists, he recognizes the importance of choosing a good problem to work on. And over the course of his junior jobs as a doctor, he kept up his research profile, establishing himself firmly in the field of immunology, especially the study of complement, a component of the innate immune system. His rise was steady as he moved from London to Cambridge and back again, becoming professor of medicine at Imperial College and eventually chair of the division of medicine and briefly vice principal of the faculty of medicine at Imperial. Mark also soon showed talents in committee rooms away from the laboratory bench. First sitting on and then chairing grant awarding panels, he demonstrated effective skills of chairmanship and the ability to guide a group of independent minded experts towards sensible funding decisions. Soon he was drawn into the work of the Wellcome Trust, which is the major funder of medical research in the UK. And from then, it was an inexorable rise to his current position as director. He now oversees the strategy for the allocation of a research budget of several hundred million pounds and has a large part of the future of medical research in the UK in his hands. Knighted in 2009, Sir Mark was elected Fellow of the Royal Society in 2011. He has also played a major role in the Academy of Medical Sciences. Now a very senior scientific statesman, his national and international profile is immense. He played a huge role in shaping the career structure for clinical medical researchers, sits on the board of the Office of Strategic Coordination of Health Research, and also works more widely, having chaired the DFES Working Group on Science and Mathematics Education in schools. Mark has never lost his passion for research. With a publication portfolio of 180 papers, 60 reviews, and authorship of a major textbook on immunobiology, his legacy in the scientific literature is assured. His influence on legions of other researchers is, however, much more extensive. He believes firmly that the future of scientific research lies in the support of those exceptional individuals and groups who have the skill and inspiration to push boundaries into the unknown, wherever that might be. 
It has just been announced that Mark is to become the next government chief scientist, where his experience and scientific judgment will be invaluable in guiding major decisions which will affect us all. Mark Walport is an exceptional medical scientist who both understands research and how to develop researchers. Under his guidance, we all look forward to great leaps in our scientific understanding of health and disease and the benefits that will flow to us all as doctors become better able to manage our illnesses. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, on the recommendation of Senate and Council, I present to you Professor Sir Mark Walport that you may confer upon him the honorary degree of Doctor of Science. I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science and welcome you among us. Many congratulations. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, Orator, um, Office of the University, fellow graduates, proud relatives, and friends. This is an important day for all of us. For me, it's a huge honor. I've been fortunate to have a wonderful career in medicine, in medical science, and now in the support of science, because I have the huge privilege of directing the Wellcome Trust. And as you've just heard, next year, I'll move on to the equally huge challenge of being the government chief scientific advisor. And one of my important tasks in that role will be to bring together academia with industry and with government. Because it's vital that the best policy is informed by the best evidence. And it's equally important at this time of great economic challenge that academia, industry, and government come together to show the world what a knowledge-based economy can really deliver. But coming back to today, I thank the University of Leicester for this extremely generous recognition. But unlike you, I have not had to write any examination papers or a thesis to get this degree. You have. And for you and for your guests, this is an important day because it celebrates first and foremost a major achievement and secondly, an important transition in your lives. My personal relationship with the university was cemented in 2006 when I had the honor of giving the Frank May Clinical Sciences Lecture. And this morning, my wife and I have had the privilege of seeing some of the terrific research that's going on in the university in a huge variety of disciplines. And in my new role, I must say, I looked at the astronomy and the satellite technology with enormous interest. But when I look at the current Wellcome Trust portfolio of support here, which amounts to well over 19 million pounds, I can immediately see both the breadth and the depth of the scholarship and research at this university. Of course, you have grants in the departments of, of, of health sciences and biology, but you have important grants in the School of Historical, Science, uh, of Historical Studies on the history of medical research in your unusual and exceptional Department of Museum Studies on new perspectives on disability in medicine. And a rather interesting sounding grant in the School of Archaeology and Ancient History entitled Harnessing the Power of the Criminal Corpse. The mind boggles. The vision of the Wellcome Trust is to achieve extraordinary improvements in human and animal health. And what you illustrate is that many disciplines from the sciences to the medical humanities must work together if we're truly to understand the human condition in health and in disease. You are all graduates in biology and biological subjects and in medicine, and you graduate at a time of extraordinary opportunities in the biological 
and the medical sciences. The power of genome science, and one hasn't got to go very far on this campus to see the work of Sir Alec Jeffries and his colleagues who've transformed the use of genetics in the social context of forensic medicine, for example. Um, medical and social science is on the threshold of realization of the power of genome science at an epic scale. And the combination of genome science with population science and the detailed study of the environment will offer huge insights into our understanding of human variation in health and disease. Uh, but we must never lose our humanity and our humor. There is an art as well as a science of medical practice. And as I was reading about the university, I couldn't help notice that the oldest building on this campus, the Fielding Johnson Building, housing the university's administration and faculty of law, was opened in 1837 as the Leicestershire and Rutland Lunatic Asylum. <laughs> it's nice to see a building retaining its historical purpose. <laughs> Turning from the past to the future, there are, I think, three important things that you take forward from your time at the University of Leicester. The first is your education. And for the medics amongst you, the importance of placing medical schools and universities is that they first and foremost educate rather than simply train you. And if you're any doubt about the difference between education and training, remember this. We want our children to have sex education but not sex training. <laughs> in fact, you're entering medicine at a time of amazing change. And in fact, there's nothing new about this. The practice of medicine was absolutely transformed during my time as a practicing clinician by huge advances in imaging. And actually, it's the contribution of other subjects such as physics, engineering, and chemistry that make a huge difference in medicine as well, of course, as our understanding of the biological sciences and the power of the genome as, for example, applied to cancer. The second thing you take from your time here is the value system of a free and enlightened society of which universities are the most powerful defenders worldwide. And that is something you must never forget. And the third is the lifelong friendships you've made during your time at university. Your career paths are not clearly mapped at this stage, and I must say the best piece of mentoring that I ever received was that careers cannot be planned, and you can see that I took that advice very seriously indeed. And I would re-emphasize the importance of mentorship talk to people and take the advice of wise people who are prepared to look after you in a disinterested fashion. It's quite difficult to map your career without good advice. But so many things are fascinating in biology and in medicine. And the most important thing is to apply yourself to whatever you do, because we live in a most extraordinary and fascinating universe. And of course, we live in an unstable environment both physically and economically. But it is actually science, engineering, and technology that have shaped the modern world and will shape the future world in which you and your children will live. You're each equipped to help shape that future, and I believe that many of you can and will make important contributions. So many congratulations to all of you and to all of your friends and relatives who've supported you and my heartfelt thank you to the University of Leicester, which I join with the greatest pleasure as one of your honorary graduates. Thank you. <laughs>